Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box, your home for simple guidance on digital mastering and digital audio. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the target loudness feature, which is a new feature inside of Studio One Professional version 5.5. And we're going to look at the ins and outs of the target loudness feature and answer the question, is this feature actually useful? But before we get into the content of the video, if you do want to know more about digital mastering and digital audio, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below, make sure you tip that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. Now let's get into Studio One. So here we are inside of Studio One and we're inside of the project page and what I've done is I've just added a simple song to the timeline. It's an unmastered track, but what I've actually done is added a limiter to do nothing else but to add some gain to the track. So if I click on the limiter here, what I can see is I've added 5 dBs worth of gain, I've used a ceiling of minus 1 dB, and I've added no threshold. The threshold is at zero because I'm not going to play the track. We're not going to use this to apply any generic compression. We're just using it to add gain to the actual track itself. Now, if I close the limiter and go to the loudness information, so that's found in this middle section here, and the loudness information will give us the pre and the post effects. So if we see the pre effects measures, what we can see is before the lim limiter has taken control, we have an integrated LUFS measure of minus 16.2, and we have a true peak measure here of minus 0.2. So what this is telling us is it's telling us our true peak fig figure is minus 0.2 and the integrated LUFS measure which we will generally use for streaming platforms is minus 16.2. But once we look at the post effects, this is going to take into consideration what the limiter is doing. It's then moved the integrated LUFS measure here to minus 11.4 LUFS integrated and we've got the true peak measure of minus 0.4. So what actually is target loudness and what does it actually do? Well, if I click on the digital release button here, and you'll see on the right hand side, we've got this new feature for loudness. And what this is trying to do is it's trying to emulate the target loudness, and I'll use that in inverted commas here, of the actual streaming platforms themselves. So as I've been speaking about for many months now is the individual streaming platforms will have their own normalised loudness figures. So for instance, if we see Apple Music here, they will use a normalisation figure or they did use a normalisation figure of minus 16.0 LUFS integrated with a max true, true peak figure of minus 1 dB. Now this is either changed or changing, so Studio One will need to keep up to date with the changes in the market themselves. But if we now go down here to say Spotify, Spotify normalizes to minus 14 LUFS integrated or a max true peak figure of minus one dB. So it's gonna take into consideration both the true peak and the minus 14 LUFS measures. And with the loudness measures, we can choose so many different options. So if we wanna do a render for SoundCloud, for Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, you name it, you can do it. So let's take, for instance, let's use Apple Music. So let's say we want to adjust our final master. We can see by the post effects, it's at minus 11.4 LUFS integrated. What this feature is gonna allow you to do is render the song to the target loudness features or the normalized loudness features for the streaming platform in question. So we're gonna use Apple Music here and this is gonna emulate the minus 16 LUFS integrated and it says here max true peak minus one. So if I now click OK, it's gonna render the file and I'll render it, put it back into the session and we'll come back in just two seconds. So now we have our rendered file, and if I actually click on the file itself, I can drag it into Studio One. And then what we're gonna be able to see here is now I can click on this track here, which is gonna highlight the rendered track. And if I now click on the loudest information, it's gonna quickly do its analysis. And then what I wanna do is now look at the pre-effects measure. The reason I wanna look at the pre-effects is because we've still got the limiter here. And as you can see, we now have an integrated LUFS measure of minus 16. So this is gonna fall in line with the target loudness or the normalized loudness measure for Apple Music. Interestingly though, you will see that the true peak measure has moved to minus five dBs. So the unmastered version on the pre effects was minus 0.2, the post effects was minus 0.4, but if we look at the pre effects now on the rendered copy using the target loudness feature, you will see that the true peak measure has now moved to minus five dBs. 
Why is this? Well, the target loudness feature is using a simple dB reduction to meet the target loudness for this specific streaming platform of your choice. And I don't like using the terms target loudness because there is no such thing as a target loudness, and I'll explain that in a second. But what it's basically saying is that Apple Music has a normalization feature of minus 16 LUFs. So to get there, it is reducing your true peak measure down by 5 dBs. So if we look at the unmastered version here, we've got the post effects of minus 11. To get to minus 16, it's reducing the true peak figure down by 5 dBs to get to minus 16 LUFs. So that is why we're going to have the difference here between the, the pre on the actual render version to the post on the unrendered version, it's basically reduced it there from minus 11 down to minus 16. So we've actually got a 5 dB reduction. So that is in short how the target loudness feature works inside a Studio One 5 Professional. Okay, so now we have our rendered version. I'm gonna answer the question, is this feature actually useful? And the reason why I've delayed doing a video on this particular feature is because I'm still struggling to find a, a good use case for this particular feature itself. Why do you ask? Why is this not a useful feature? Well, first and foremost, let's just understand that there is no such thing as a target loudness measure. And I'm saying this on the basis that all of the different streaming platforms will have different normalization levels. So Spotify is at minus 14 integrated LUFs, but once again, that's not taking into consideration different things. Say for example, if you master a song that's to be played in, a, in an album or an EP, then it's gonna normalize based on that EP or album. But once you take that song out of the EP or album, let's say you put it into a playlist, it's gonna normalize completely differently. So it's not a straightforward case of using one particular normalization level because Spotify will use its algorithms to adjust that normalization based on the user's listening experience. So if it's played as a single, then minus 14 LUFs may be there or thereabouts as to what you were listening to it on when you're listening to it inside of Spotify. But the moment you take it out and put it into a playlist or into an album, it's going to be normalized completely differently. It may be there or thereabouts, but it's going to be normalized to a different level than minus 14 LUFs. So that is one reason why I don't think this is a particularly useful feature. However, let's also discuss the different options here. So when you go to digital release, once again, we have so many different options. Apple Music, Deezer, Netflix, Spotify, Tidal, YouTube, Amazon, the list goes on. Now, when it comes to actually releasing music, most people will go down the route of releasing music using a digital distribution platform. Let's say DistroKid or CD Baby. You can only upload one file. So what file do you choose? Do you choose to normalize to Apple Music? Do you choose to normalize to Spotify? We know that there are different measures for different platforms. So what platform do you choose? And this is the challenge where it doesn't matter what platform you will choose, each of the individual streaming platforms themselves will apply their own algorithms. So they'll have a completely different result. So say, for example, if I was to choose the Apple Music and upload this at minus 16 integrated LUFs, then Spotify is just going to turn it up. Some of the other platforms are likely just going to turn it up. Now, what happens, for example, if I go the other way? Are they going to turn it down? Quite possibly, they might turn it down. So there's no one size fits all. So regardless of what feature you use or what loudness adjustment you use, whether it's Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, the platform's just going to do what it needs to do anyway. So this is trying to emulate something that the platform's already going to do, yet this isn't taking into consideration that the multiple different streaming platforms, they're all going to have different loudness measures. So you can't pick one, one side doesn't fit all. It's not going to work in that particular instance. So I mentioned earlier on around target loudness, and I mentioned that there is no such thing as target loudness, and that is absolutely true. And I just want people to kind of understand here that loudness normalization is not there for you to set target levels for your mixing and mastering. You know, your master should not be hitting a certain level. You should be mastering to the loudness that you feel suits your particular track. So for instance, if you feel that, you know, pushing more gain into it and you get, say, an integrated lust measure of minus 12, 
go for it. You should not be targeting your overall loudness for any particular streaming platform. You master your tracks to whatever level that you feel is the best level for that particular track, and you use that, and then let the streaming platforms to use their algorithms to either turn the music down, or if in extreme cases, maybe turn the music up. Now, I would always recommend to mastering the track at the volume that you feel you are most comfortable with. So if you want to put some additional gain into it, and let's say you get to minus 12 luffs or minus 11 luffs, and you think that sounds best, then go with it. The thing with trying to use a target loudness, let's say, for example, we're going to use Apple Music. And if I was to actually use the limiter to reach a at minus 16 luffs integrated measure with a max true peak of minus 1 dB. When it comes to Spotify, Spotify won't be able to turn that music up. And the reason is because they will use a dB uh, attenuation or adding dB to get your track to that minus 14 luffs. So say if they feel that they need to add 2 dBs worth of gain to move from minus 16 to minus 14, yet they're using a max true peak figure of minus one, if you're already at minus one true peak with a max loudness of minus 16 luffs, they can't turn it up to get to minus 14. Because if they do so, it will clip. Therefore, they won't turn up the song from the Apple Music standards to the Spotify standards. So that's why I would always recommend to hit in at least minus 14 luffs on an integrated measure with a max true peak of minus 1 dB. So you know that whatever you're gonna, whatever platform it's going to go to, they can turn it down to meet their loudness standards or their loudness normalization levels but you're always going to be competitive with whatever other music is going to be out there at the same time. Now, one thing that I will say is one use case where I do think this could be actually quite useful is to using this as an approximation to understand how the tracks will sound when it comes to the streaming platforms and choice. So say for a particular instance, let's say I wanted to measure or try and get a comparison as to how this will convert to Spotify. What I could do is actually click here and do the drop down box and go down to Spotify. Spotify, the max loudness would be minus 14 luffs with a max true peak level of minus one dB. I also know that Spotify would use the Ogvorbis file format or an approximation thereof. So what I could actually do is actually use a variable bit rate, put this to max quality, and I could actually then render this in Ogvorbis at the Spotify loudness level to use this as an approximation as to what the conversion process will sound like. And I can do this for any format. So say for instance, if I wanted to do the same for uh, Apple Music, I could then choose the Apple Music version. I believe that Apple Music uses AIFF. So if I then use AIFF, take off the WAV and the Ogvorbis, and I could do the same here. I could use 24-bit, 44-1, render the file out, and then I can listen to that actual track in that file format using the target loudness feature, but use it as an approximation tool to gauge exactly what the conversion process is going to be doing. So this is one way that I do feel this feature could be useful. So one last thing before I finish this video, one of the questions I can already anticipate is, well, if we master to minus 14 luffs, will that not make our music more dynamic? It could, if, you master your track manually to minus 14 luffs integrated. When you master above minus 14 luffs, and if you were to use the target loudness feature, it's not going to add more dynamics to your track. It's going to take the same track and just use an attenuation to reduce the overall volume down to match the loudness normalization level of the actual streaming platform itself. If you want to achieve a more dynamic master, then you have to manually either use limiting and compression to make sure that your final level on your post effects on your track here. So let's say with a headspace, if I was to use the headspace feature here, and if I was to click on the track and then click on post effects, I would need to manually master to ensure that this level here hits minus 14 luffs with a true peak measure here of minus one. The target loudness feature will not make your track more dynamic. It will just attenuate the signal to the loudness levels of the particular platform that you are choosing. So if you want to go down the route and make your track more dynamic, then you need to do this manually by reducing the gain that you're putting into the limiter or by reducing any compression that you're adding to the overall master itself. So that is a manual process and not something that will be picked up by the target's loudness feature. So that's it for today's video and I hope you found this useful. For me still, I can't really find a useful 
case to use this particular feature, except for that approximation example. If I wanted to hear what it would sound like when it goes up to Spotify, for example, and doing the render via Ogvorbis using the minus 14 LUFS measures, that could be quite useful, but it's not a tool that I would use on a practical basis for any client masters. But what do you think? Have you used the target loudness feature? If you have, let me know in the comments down below, because I'll be really keen to understand your thoughts and what kind of results that you've got with this particular feature itself. I could see this being quite useful for SoundCloud. So if you're only interested in uploading the track to SoundCloud, you could use the target loudness for SoundCloud. It will do the normalization for SoundCloud effectively, and you could upload it direct to SoundCloud without having to worry too much about major adjustments going on behind the scenes. But excluding that particular example, it's not something that I would use for any of my client masters. But if you have used it, let me know in the comments section down below. So. Once again, if you want to know more about digital mastering, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tip that bell and select all to receive notifications on all our video. And all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.